and we welcome you to Christ Baptist Church where we're located at 4700 East 7th Avenue in the wonderful city of Gary, Indiana, where our pastor is Lawrence E. Robertson. These are your announcements. Sunday school continues to be held on Sunday mornings by telephone conference call. There are three classes each Sunday, 8 a.m., 8.30 a.m., and 12.30 p.m. New members meet on Tuesday at 5 p.m. Teenagers and young adults, 11 a.m. on Saturday on Facebook Live. All you have to do is turn on Facebook Live and there's Sunday School. Please call the church for the phone numbers to join the other Sunday School classes. Social media, you don't have to belong to Christ Baptist to join us for Sunday School. Likewise, social media and Christ Baptist family, Wednesday noon is Bible study. If you are interested in joining us, call the office at 219-938-5504 and provide your email address to be notified of the telephone number to join and to receive the study guide. Our pastor will certainly welcome you. If you are celebrating your birthday today or you celebrated your birthday this past week, we wish you a blessed birthday. And remember, we are celebrating and praying for you for your birthday. These have been your morning announcements. We thank you, thank you, thank you. And we pray that you enjoyed this and have a wonderfully blessed week.
search everywhere, there's nobody like Jesus. Amen. Oh, we ought to give God a hand praise for the choir. I'm grateful to God that he has allowed us to see another day's journey. He's allowed us to be in his house of worship one more time. Grateful to God for our deacons today who have already devoted this service to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our choir has lifted up his name in song, and now it is prayer time. And if you're able to stand, let us rest to our feet for the Lord's Prayer.
every day is a day of thanksgiving. God woke you up this morning, that's a time of thanksgiving. He watched over you last night, he kept you safe. Every day is a day of thanksgiving. Oh, we waste so much time, you know, we waste so much time when we ought to be giving God thanks. Because every day is a day of thanksgiving. I'm so grateful to God for the choir. They have brought us to the place where we're ready to open up the book to the word of his grace. And I'm asking that you turn in your Bibles to the Gospel of Luke. St. Luke. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 23, where we will be reading three little verses. In Luke, chapter 23, we will be reading verses 44 through 46. In Luke, chapter 23, and if you're able to stand, let us rest to our feet for the reading of God's word. Reverend Jonathan Moore is here now to read the scripture, and again, he will repeat the chapter and verses. Reverend Jonathan. Amen. That's Luke chapter 23, verses 44 through 46. The Gospel of Luke chapter 23, verses 44 through 46. And it reads... It was now about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon for the sun stopped shining and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. That's the word of God for the people of God, blessed in his mighty presence. Amen. Amen.
worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. We worship the Lord because of who he is. I thank God for the choir and I thank God for our music director and musicians who have prepared us to hear the word of God. I'm grateful to God for these ministers in the pulpit this morning. Reverend Mary Watkins and Reverend Kimberly Raspberry and I thank God for Reverend Jonathan Moore reading the word so clearly and boldly for your understanding. I'm asking that you keep your Bibles open to Luke's Gospel, chapter 23. And as you look at this passage of scripture, where the Gospel writer Luke says in verse 44, it was now about noon and darkness came over the whole land. And then in verse 45, Dr. Luke says, for the sun stopped shining. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 You know, Deacon Connor, Deacon Martin, you and I, we spent a little time in the military. I was in the army many years ago, stationed overseas. And my roommate, a young sergeant, he was sent home, he was court-martialed, and they assigned me a new roommate. And this gentleman was from Wyoming. And he had, he was a true cowboy, let me say that. He had the cowboy shirts and the bolero tie, he had the cowboy boots, I mean the authentic cowboy hat, the leather, he, he was a true cowboy. He had pictures on the wall of when he was a child where he participated in rodeos. He rode horses, he and his whole family. Not only that, he had a collection of cowboy movies. He had those westerns back in the day, young people who are here, you may not understand, but you can stream a movie now. But back then, we had collections of beta tapes and VHS tapes. And he had a collection, he had boxes of, of cowboy movies, of westerns. He had the gunfight at the OK Corral uh, with Burt Lancaster and Kirk Douglas. He had, he had all of the John Wayne movies. He had the Cowboys, he had Rio Bravo, Rio Lobo. He had the Sons of Katie Elder. He had all of the old westerns. And he had this one movie that was in black and white. This movie that starred Gary Cooper and Grace Kelly. And Gary Cooper was the sheriff of this town. And he cleaned up the town. Gary Cooper as the sheriff, he, he arrested all the criminals and sent them up the river, sent them to jail. And the town appreciated the new sheriff. They loved him and they doted on him. And one day he got married. He married the love of his life. He was having a marvelous day. They had planned their honeymoon. They had planned to take the wagon and go to the mountains and spend some time in the mountains. But then word came to that little town that one of the criminals that he sent to jail, one of the criminals that in the courtroom vowed, when I get out, I'm coming back to get you and destroy this town. Word came that this criminal, this, this gangster had escaped jail and was on his way back with his mob to that little town. And the record is in that movie that he was coming in on the noon train. And some of you know the movie I'm talking about. The title of that movie was High Noon. High Noon, when all was going well in that town, but it might as well have been midnight because the shadow of death was hovering over that town. I thank God that you listened to my little story. <laughs> High noon, but it was dark in that town because the sheriff now was living under the shadow of death. His life had been threatened. And so this morning with our scripture as our foundation where the apostle Luke 
where Dr. Luke says it was about noon and darkness came over the whole land. I want to preach and teach from the subject title, When High Noon Looks Like Midnight. When High Noon Looks Like Midnight. Won't you bow in a moment of prayer? Oh, gracious and merciful Father in heaven, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to serve you. I'm humbled by this awesome responsibility. And now, Lord, I pray that you use me as you will. Father, use my mind, but let it be your wisdom. Use my eyes, Lord, but let it be your vision. Use my mouth, Father, but let it be your word. Let your word go forth with clarity and understanding. For your name is magnified and glorified. Your people are edified and your kingdom is advanced. This is my prayer. I'm your servant and you're my God. And I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. When high noon looks like midnight. In our scripture today, the gospel writer Luke is describing all that's going on around Jesus during the crucifixion. Luke is giving us the scene. He is painting us a picture. He's painting a picture for us about what was happening in the atmosphere while Jesus was hanging on the cross. Luke is telling us what was happening at the temple while Jesus was being crucified. In these three short verses, Luke does not tell us about the agony and the pain that Jesus is enduring. In these three verses, Luke is showing us the trauma and the agony that the whole land is in. Luke is revealing to us in these three verses the distress of the whole land. The whole land is suffering. The whole land is in disarray. The whole land is in darkness. Sounds like today. All the land is in darkness from noon to three in the afternoon. For three hours, it is dark. At a time when the sun should be at its height in the sky, Luke writes and says, it was now about noon. And darkness came over the land, the whole land, until three in the afternoon. At a time when the day should be its brightest, at a time when the sun's rays are the highest and coming directly from the top, the sun stopped shining. Oh, that had to be a frightening day. Can you imagine going around and and you look and the sun just stops Shining. I don't want you to misunderstand this passage of scripture, but trying to exercise your human understanding. I know you watch the weather man and the weather woman on TV. I know that many of you have the weather app on your phones and your smart devices where you can quickly access and gain information and see what the weather is going to be at any moment. You can tell somebody that it's going to be mostly cloudy or partly sunny today. But what Luke is describing in our scripture today is not a meteorological forecast about the weather. What Luke is describing in our scripture today is not a time when it's partly sunny or mostly cloudy. No, no. Luke in verse 45 He says, the sun stopped shining. Oh, I don't think you got it. The sun stopped shining. Meteorology, meteorology, I can't even say that word. Don't worry about it. In terms of the weather, (laughs) meteorologically, (laughs) even when the sun goes behind a cloud, it's still shining. You've seen the sun's rays pierce around the cloud. And then again, I've seen this phenomenon, and and perhaps you've seen this phenomenon where it could be raining and the sun is still shining. But Luke writes that 
the sun stopped shining. The question is, why does the sun stop shining? The question is, why is darkness over the whole land? Is it because uh, these men are being put to death? Is it because these three men uh, have been given the death penalty? Is it because of that? Is it because of the crucifixion? Crucifixion, historians know that crucifixions happened all the time in the Roman Empire. But the sun kept shining. It was not unusual for criminals to be punished in this way. It was not odd or unusual for criminals to be put to death. You have to pay a penalty for committing an offense back then. And you have to pay a penalty for committing an offense today. It's still true today. If you break the law, there's a penalty that you have to pay. If you go out there and run that stop sign or run that stop light, you're going to get a ticket because there's a penalty you have to pay. But the sun is going to keep on shining. If you go steal or rob a bank and get caught... The penalty is you go to jail, but the sun won't stop shining. There are penalties for wrongdoing, even in sports. Reverend Jonathan, there are penalties. If you break the rules in football, the the referee's going to throw a penalty flag, but the sun doesn't stop shining. If you don't follow the rules in basketball, there's a penalty, there's a technical foul, there's even an ejection from the game. You can't stump somebody in the chest. There's a penalty for that. But the sun ain't going to stop shining. Penalties all around us for wrongdoing. But the sun keeps on shining. But on Calvary, There was one man who was not a criminal. On Calvary, while people stood watching and sneering at Jesus, in verse 35, the sun stopped shining. On Calvary, where the soldiers mocked him, in verse 36, the sun stopped shining. When the soldiers put a sign over the cross that said, this is the king of the Jews, the sun stopped shining. Again, I'm going to ask you the question, why does the sun stop shining? Well, since you won't answer it, I'll answer it. It's because Jesus, who committed no crime, Jesus, who committed no sin, is being punished for the sins of the world. Jesus is being nailed to an old rugged cross. Why does the sun stop shining? Because the son of the living God is hanging on the cross. Why does the sun stop shining? Because the way, the truth, and the life, the Messiah and the Redeemer is hanging on the cross. Oh, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end has been nailed to an old rugged cross. The sun has to stop shining because my advocator, my battle axe, my creator, and my sustainer is hanging on the cross. He's paying the penalty for me, and he's paying the penalty for you. The sun had to stop shining because the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace has been nailed to the cross. Uh, The lily of the valley and the rose of Sharon, the way out of no way, the sun had to stop shining. That's why it's noonday. But it looks like midnight. Anytime you you nail your Savior, nail Jesus to the cross, the sun is going to stop shining. The Hebrew writer says that there are those who crucify Jesus over and over again in Hebrews chapter 6. What that means is that when you put Jesus on the back burner, when Jesus is not first in your life, you can expect some darkness in your life. The sun is going to stop shining. Jesus, who had no sin, is taking on the sins of the world. And when the S-O-N sun is shining, the S-U-N has to go out. It's dark. It's high noon and it's dark. Biblical scholars see this passage of scripture as the Lord allowing daylight and darkness 
to occupy the same space. Daylight and darkness cannot occupy the same space. Daylight always overcomes darkness. But here, biblical scholars say that God has allowed these two to occupy the same time and same space. Bible readers know that in Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, the Bible says, And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And here it is. And God separated the light from the darkness. But here on Calvary, the light and the darkness have come together. On Calvary, you couldn't tell if it was daytime or nighttime. On Calvary, high noon looks like midnight. And that's the world we live in today. It's hard to tell the difference between light and darkness. It's hard to tell the difference between the so-called children of light and the children of darkness. That's the world we live in today because in the daylight, everything has its own distinctiveness. In the light, Everything is clear and concise. In the light, you can see the lines and the boundaries that you should not cross. In the light, the way is clear and the rules are clear. But in the darkness, (laughs) you got blurred lines. In the darkness, everything becomes just a, a shade of gray. In the darkness, anything goes. In the darkness, It's hard to see the lines and the borders. In the light, we obey the Ten Commandments. But in the dark, there is an eleventh commandment. Thou shall not get caught. In the light, you ought to come to church and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. But they say that there's a certain type of people that come out at night. In the light, we ought to serve God. But in the dark, anything goes. Anything goes. Jesus said we ought to be the light of the world. The Bible says, what does light have to do with darkness? It's dark in our world today. You know, it's dark. When when it's dark, there's nothing absolutely right. And there's nothing absolutely wrong. When it's dark, it's just a matter of what the majority of people are doing. When it's dark, it's whatever everybody else is doing it. So I might as well do it myself. When it's dark, when noonday looks like a midnight, when children run the streets in mobs and and gangs and damage and vandalize property, it's dark. When the news media can knowingly and purposely tell lies even though they know the truth, it's dark. When people are driving and like you and I do, using their GPS to find a house and they go too far and they turn around in somebody's driveway and they end up losing their lives. It's dark. It's noonday, but it's midnight when a young, gifted young man is sent to a house to pick up his little brother and he rings the doorbell of the wrong house and he's shot twice. Once in the head and once in the arm. It's noonday, but it's dark outside. It's noonday, but it looks like midnight. Oh, I don't want to discourage you this morning with an old dark message. I don't want to discourage you this morning with a message about midnight. Because the Bible says it was midnight when a man knocked on the door and asked for three loaves of bread. It's midnight in our world today. But even in this passage of scripture, there is still a however. Even though it's dark in this passage of scripture, there is still a nevertheless. There is still a but God. Yes, it's noonday and it looks like midnight. But I want to tell you today that even when it's dark, our God does his best work in the dark. Our God works hard and he does his best work in the dark. It was dark when Jacob wrestled with an angel all night. And Jacob said, I won't let you go until you bless me. It was dark when Daniel was thrown down into a lion's den. But Daniel used one lion for a pillow. 
another lion for a footrest and a third lion for a teddy bear. It was dark when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into a fiery furnace. And the record is when King Nebuchadnezzar looked in the furnace, he said, I thought we threw in three. I see a fourth and he looks like the son of God. God does his best work in the dark. It was dark when David was on the run from Saul, hiding in caves and hiding in valleys. But I heard David say, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. God does his best work in the dark. It was dark when the disciples were out on the Sea of Galilee and a mighty storm arose, it was dark. But I heard Jesus say three little words, peace be still. It was dark when Jonah was down in the belly of a fish, but Jonah had sense enough to put one elbow in one side of the fish, the other elbow in the other side of the fish and make himself a little prayer room. And then God delivered Jonah from the belly of a fish. Oh, I'm going to preach it by myself. It was dark when the disciples were out on the sea and Jesus came to them walking on the water. God does his best work in the dark. It was dark. The Bible says it was midnight when Paul and Silas were down in jail in Philippi. They were down there singing and praising the Lord. And the record is a mighty earthquake shook that old jailhouse and their chains fell off and the doors flew open. God does his best work in the dark. It was dark when the death angel passed over Egypt land and saw the blood on the doorposts and the mantle. The reason you are here today is because God does his best work in the dark. By the grace of God, the death angel passed over your house while you slept and slumbered. By the grace of God, he kept you safe from all hurt, harm, and danger while you slept. No matter how dark the times become, We serve a God that never sleeps nor slumbers. We serve a God that works the night shift. We serve a God that does his best work in the dark. I'm going to close when I tell you this. It was dark when Jesus was born in a stable. It was dark when he was laid in a manger wrapped in swaddling clothes. It was dark. Somebody's saying, preacher, how do you know it was dark? You wasn't there. I know it was dark because the record is three wise men, three kings followed a star in the night to find where Jesus was. It was dark down in the garden of Gethsemane when he prayed and blood fell like sweat. It was dark when Jesus said, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, let thy will be done. It was dark in our scripture today, from noon until 3 p.m., when high noon looks like midnight. The gospel writer Luke says the sun stopped shining. I wonder if there's anybody here today that's had some darkness in your life. I'm not talking about nighttime darkness. I'm talking about darkness in the middle of the day. I'm talking about darkness that comes at high noon. Darkness at one o'clock in the afternoon. Darkness at two o'clock. When daytime looks like nighttime. When high noon looks like midnight. It's daytime when you ought to be living your best life. But it's midnight because you miss a loved one. It's daytime when all is bright and shiny. But it's midnight because you are experiencing loneliness. It's high noon all around for everybody else. 
but it's midnight down in your soul because you've been hurt. You've been mistreated. I stopped by to tell you today that the sun is going to shine if you hold out. I stopped by to tell you this morning that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I stopped by to tell you that trouble don't last always. Yes, it's midnight, but Luke tells us that Jesus was crucified in the dark. God does his best work in the dark. When the soldiers nailed his hands and nailed his feet, it started getting dark. When they hung him high and stretched him wide, the sun stopped shining. When they put a thorny crown on his head and pressed it down, it was getting dark. My God does his best work in the dark. When Jesus hung his head and died, that tells me he died in the dark. They put him down in an old borrowed grave one dark Friday night. Stayed there all night Friday, all day Saturday, all night Saturday night. It was dark. But one bright Sunday morning, I said early one bright Sunday morning, one bright Sunday morning, he got up. The sun was shining. He stepped out on resurrection ground, raised his hand. All power is in my hand. All power. I've got all power. He has all power. Redemption power. Mercy power. Grace power. Healing power. Forgiveness power. Salvation power. All power is in his hand. Trouble don't last always. The sun is going to shine. Yes, even when noonday looks like a midnight. God does his best work in the dark. God bless you. God keep you. The doors to my father's house are open. Now is the time and this is the place where you ought to walk in the light and come to Jesus. The doors to my father's house are open. The invitation to discipleship is yours. Won't you come? Give your life to Jesus on the strength and power of God's word. I offer the invitation to discipleship. Won't you come? Won't you come? Man, woman, boy, or girl, unchurched, unsaved, uncommitted, won't you come? The doors to my father's house are open. It's all about you now. Won't you come? We offer Christ to you today. Won't you come? come as a candidate for baptism. You may come on Christian experience, reaffirmation of faith. Won't you come? You may come in search of a church home. We will welcome you with open arms. Won't you come? Ministers are in the aisles to greet you as you come. The choir is singing. The deacons are waiting for you. To our friends who are watching by way of social media and on the TLE network, I offer that same invitation to you. The Bible says if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father in heaven, you shall be saved. Make that confession today. And my prayer is once you make that confession, the God, the Father, the Lord put a covering on you and order your steps from this day forward. Make that confession. And once you make that confession, make sure you get into a good Bible teaching, Bible reading church. We would love to have you here at Christ Baptist Church. But if you can't make it here, 
4700 East 7th Avenue, Gary, Indiana. Make sure you get under the tutelage of a good Bible teaching church. God bless you and God keep you in Jesus' name. Amen. It's not too late. The doors to my father's house are always open. It's not too late. Doors to my father's house are always open. As our ministers, spiritual leaders, deacons readjust, this is a time we set aside for meditation and reflection, where we allow the word of God to fill the sanctuary and penetrate hearts. It's meditation time where our music director and musicians play for us music of meditation.
thank God for our music ministry and our music director. Amen. It's prayer time as we prepare to go to the altar in prayer. I want to make sure that we lift up our deacon, Sam Custer. He is at Rush Hospital in Chicago. I want us to lift up all of our sick and shut in on the list that will scroll across the screen. I want us to lift up our children, our young people, and pray that the Lord provide for them direction. Pray for their parents, their mothers and fathers to provide that direction and guidance for our young people. We don't want to see the next generation on the road to destruction. It's prayer time and Brother Nimrod Atkins is coming now with the prayer requests for the week. Thank you, Pastor. My church family, as Pastor stated, let's continue to pray for this wonderful human being, Sam Custer, Man. who was hospitalized recently. It is with heartfelt sorrow and, and deepest sympathy that we announce the following. Corey Chandler, the nephew of our own Loretta Clark, and the son of Sandra Clark passed away recently. Let's keep the Clark family in our prayers. Amen. Thank you very much. Bless you. Amen. Church, you've heard the spoken prayer request, and it's prayer time. And we all stand in the need of prayer. And it's amazing how one moment you can be up high on the high mountain of hallelujahs, and the next moment, you can be down in the valley of sorrow. This past week was revival week, allowing me and other pastors to go hear pastors from all over the country. And I left out of a service, a noonday service the other day with such joy and, and height in the spirit. And I received the news that Deacon Brother Sam Custer was in the hospital. I want us to continue to pray for him and pray for each other. Deacon Foster Stevens is coming now to render the altar prayer. And I want us to make sure we pray for those who are behind us, those who are in front of us, those to our left and to our right, so that all in the house are prayed for. Pray for every house, every church that's open in the name of Jesus. And ask God and pray for restoration where churches are filled again, where people come out to the house of worship. Deacon Foster is here now to render the altar prayer. Good morning, Christ Baptist and those in the media audience. Pastor, first of all, thank you for such an inspiring sermon. Bless you. And Brother Sims, thank you for that inspirational music. We come to you this morning in prayer in the name of the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for waking us up this morning in our right sense of mind and clothed like no other one could clothe us. Father, we thank you for waking us up once again, we thank you because you didn't have to wake us up. So many did not. Father, we thank you for the shelter over our heads, the clothing on our body, and the food on our table. Because it is through your grace that we have this, Father. Father, this world is in chaos. A ball of confusion. But we know, Father, Putting our faith in you, things will be okay. Father, we pray for those who are sick, those who are shut in, those who wish to be here who cannot be for whatever reason. And we send a special prayer for one of our own, Deacon Samuel Custer. Father, he was here praying for us just recently, and now we're praying for him. I understand that he's okay. Someone here spoke with him, Deacon Muriel Green. She said he's happy and doing well. 
So that is through your grace, Father. Father, we pray for our children. And we are praying for our children, Father. Because we have failed our children. We want to be their friends instead of their parents. As we look at what's going on in the world today, the kids are out all times of night when we should be at home with our kids and they should be home with us. So we pray for them, Father. It takes a village to raise a child and let us bring that village back together so that we can take care of our children. That was a time when this sanctuary was filled with children, more children than adults. So we need to get back to those days, Father. As we look at Christ Baptist bylaws, it says that we will form that each of us should bring a soul to Christ each year. Let us get back to doing our duty. Let us be ambassadors for Christ. And if we can do that, we can turn this world around. Recently, I was told, I was in a meeting, and I was told that for every 4,000 people who are suffering from mental illness, there's one professional to help them. So, Father, let us pray for those who are mentally incapacitated, because it is not their fault in many cases. So, let us reach out, not shun away from them. Let us reach out and help them. Let us be servants of the Lord. That is what we're here to do. To do. Let us be a blessing. We have been blessed. Let us be a blessing. Father, there's so much going on in this world. Yes. Some things we can control and some we can. Let us come out of the darkness and into the light. And as we come into the light, let us bring others into the light. For that is our goal, that is our mission, that is why you have us here, Father. So Father, as we go out and these doors are open, let us remember what is said here today. We are the answer, we are the solution. So let us be that. This and all things I pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 We come again to another special time of worship, and that is of giving. Giving back to God from what he's given to us. And this is worship time. So if all heads and minds will go to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, Oh God, we come again just giving you thanks. We come giving you praise. Father, we come giving you honor today. Father, we ask that you bless this offering in a special way, Lord. That you will bless us so it will be used for the building of your kingdom. 
And we pray this prayer in your son's name, in Jesus' name, amen. Were you blessed by the service today? Now, I heard you all laughing at me when I stumbled over that word. <laughs> I heard them back here and saw you all grinning and laughing when I tried to say, I'm not even going to try to say it again. <laughs> but go out from here and, and share this message with someone. And to our friends who are watching by way of social media, we thank God for you. And we want you to hit the like button and follow us and become members of Christ Baptist Church and share this message because someone needs to hear the word of God. Don't go out from here and say that, you know, pastor couldn't say this word today. He tried. Uh, tell them the message today. You know, it's amazing how you can do something good for 20 years and People will forget that, but you make one mistake and they never forget it. Never. I didn't make a mistake. I didn't make a mistake. That was just a tough word and I was trying to, to get through that word. But I thank God that we had a blessed service today. Amen. And as we prepare to go out from here and enjoy our afternoon, enjoy this springtime day. Make sure you eat good, but let's check in on our seasoned saints. Let's look out and watch out for our children and watch out and pray for one another. Amen. Amen. Let's rest to our feet for our closing music and benediction. Father, we thank you for all that we have seen and heard and felt today. We thank you for every song of praise. We thank you, Father, for the music ministry. We thank you for the opportunity to render prayers unto thee. We thank you, Lord, for the word today. And we especially thank you for Jesus. And now as we prepare to go out from this place, but not out of your presence, we pray, O oh God, that you go with us, go ahead of us, go before us, make a way for us. But most importantly, God, go with us. Now may the grace of God as Father and as Son and the sweet communion of God as Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide in each of these thy people now, henceforth, and forevermore, world without end. And all of God's people can say together, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen.